Welcome back to another GTN Coaches Corner where you can send your questions in to us at GTN using the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner. Training related, racing related, kit related, you name it, fire them into us. Today, we're going to be tackling foot numbness on the bike and the run. The ideal bike for a hilly bike course, training for a hilly bike course, preventing runners' toenails, and the best foods for recovery. So, jumping in with first one from Donish Cushing, said, I'm training for my first 70.3 in August, and the course is hilly. I haven't bought a racing bike and have been doing all my training on my kicker bike and riding my hybrid bike in the city. I'm wondering what bike you might recommend for hilly courses if price is not a barrier. For reference, the bike portion has about 3.3 thousand feet, feet, sorry, not meters, of elevation. Please help. Well, my recommendation would be get yourself a Canyon Ultimate with Zip 303 Firecrest wheels. I'd probably run it tubeless. Uh, no, I'm only joking. If we could dream. You did say if price is not an issue. Uh, simple answer, obviously doing a 70.3, it's likely that is non-drafting. Um, non-drafting obviously means that you won't be riding in a peloton and uh, getting that draft effect um, and benefit of riding behind others. Now, some might argue, and this is a big discussion at the moment with the Ironman World Championships for the men being a niece this year on a hilly course, but a TT bike is still faster for those style of events. Now, a road bike, for it to be faster on this kind of course, you need to be averaging less than 17 kilometers an hour. Otherwise, anything above that, which I suspect you're going to be doing, even though it is a hilly course, you will benefit from a triathlon bike or a TT bike instead even though there is a weight saving. Now, James has actually well, performed very well. He's won Outdoors Triathlon and Ombre Man, which are incredibly hilly, probably the hilliest races you can think of in triathlon. And he's done them both on triathlon bikes. So if he can do it, I'm sure you can. Uh, so yeah, triathlon bike all the way. Uh, next question from Underdog Triathlon. Said, hi GTN, appreciate the advice as always. I've got my second 70.3 distance race coming up this June. Because I've raced this distance before, I'm confident enough in terms of baseline fitness, but not the specific conditions of the race. My first 70.3 Grand Rapids had a bike course that was almost entirely flat. However, I've had some teammates describe the bike course of my upcoming race, I'm on 70.3 Virginia's Blue Ridge, by saying you're basically either going uphill or down downhill the entire time. I've never done a race like that at any distance. What should I be doing to prepare for an especially hilly bike leg? Is there anything I can do on a trainer, such as low cadence reps or tackling Swift's larger KOMs? Is it worth spending more time getting outside and trying to find some good hills to practice on? Or should I just stay focused on my current training and get myself as fit as possible for the start line, regardless of the conditions? Well, uh, the best way to prepare for the hills is to ride the hills. Um, pretty obvious. Uh, the second, obviously, is just get yourself fit. Now, in terms of the training on Zwift and indoors, yes, of course, that is going to help to a degree. And also the low cadence and high torque work will make you stronger and absolutely that will help. What I will say though, there's nothing like actually riding outside on the hills. There, it's just the extra muscles that are involved in, involved in sort of the stabilizing when you're getting up out of the saddle. All those little things that actually, if you haven't prepared for with that, it's actually gonna sap a lot of energy from you on the day. So I would recommend getting out, riding on the hills as much as possible, but equally keep going as you are with just the training, getting yourself fit and you'll find you will be absolutely fine. Great, next question from Julia Nuta uh, said, hi guys, I was hoping you have some tips to prevent runners toenails. I'm wearing the right shoe size after extensive testing, keeping my toenails short and yet I cannot remember the last time I had 10 healthy and happy toenails. Appreciate the help and love your work. Also, side note, said, I know James had quite the challenge to read out my username last time you answered my question, so sorry about that. This is what happens when you create a YouTube profile at eight years old and you want to become a mermaid. Hello, I'm Julia. Uh, so yes, uh, James had a bit of trouble, well, saying her name, he, he pronounced it as Be Mermaid. It turns out it was Be A Mermaid 3338. And yeah, so her name's Julia. So hello, Julia. Uh, and she has toenails, so she's clearly not really a mermaid, but anyway. Um, anyway, 
This is actually something that I haven't really struggled with, but I know that James and Heather have. So sorry, you probably got the wrong person or maybe you got the right person because maybe I'm doing something right. I don't know. But basically the reason that people get black toenails or lose their toenails, well, typically if you get black toenails, you're gonna lose your toenail. That is as a result of the toenail normally touching the top of the shoe rather than hitting the end of the shoe. That's not to say that when they hit the end of the shoe, it's not gonna to cause toenails to be lost or go black, but it is typically hitting the top of the shoe. Uh, so tips for you here are wearing nice thin socks, Vaseline on the top. Uh, now, personally, I actually also Vaseline underneath, but I know James doesn't like doing that and he almost recommends not doing that, but personally, I found that really helps with just reducing blisters. I think that's more of a preference thing with it maybe feeling slippy inside the shoe. Um, and also making sure that your laces are tied well, the foot is secure, it's not moving around too much which is obviously an issue when we start using elastic laces. So if you're doing anything long, then you may want to opt for normal laces and just commit to the fact that you're gonna lose a little bit of time through transition, but actually that's gonna be outweighed by the comfort and maybe not having to hobble in the final five or 10K of the event. Uh, the other thing also is just maybe making sure that you have a wider toe box if perhaps that is the issue that is cramping up the toes. Uh, so just making sure that the shoe fits you well, but it sounds like that is something you've already tackled. Uh, but yeah, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comment section down below if I haven't quite covered that for you, um, because actually it may be something that other people can advise on, and uh, maybe they've got experience or found out some hacks. Uh, without cutting holes in the end of their shoes. And next up from Dakala Moti. Hello coaches, may I ask best foods to eat after training and around what time after training sessions should we fuel to recover? Thank you very much. Uh, simple answer is immediately, there is a window or a glycogen window after training in which your body will replenish glycogen stores readily. Uh, this window is broader than it was previously thought to be. We often were told you have to replenish glycogen stores within 20 minutes after exercise. However, regardless of that, make sure that you are replenishing them as quickly as you can or as soon as you can after finishing the workout. And this can be anything from a recovery drink, chocolate milk, through to sort of a carbohydrate bar, snack, etc. And this will actually also hopefully prevent that hunger binge maybe in an hour's time when you start raiding the fridge. Uh, so you should then also then follow up your recovery drink or that snack immediately after with a proper meal, something with carbs, perhaps more complex carbs and protein that then gonna start help to begin that repair process from the workout. In terms of best foods, well, this one is kind of up to you. You can use your common sense here, just making sure that it's healthy. So uh, with that recovery drink, maybe making sure that it's a three to one ratio in terms of protein to carbs. And then after that, you're looking for a lean, healthy meal, maybe a two to one protein ratio, um, and you're making sure that you're having that perhaps within an hour. Um, that could be a sandwich, eggs on toast, and so on. As I said, use your common sense, totally up to you, uh, personal preference, but short answer is making sure that you're getting fuel in almost immediately after your workout. Uh, final question from S7 Ormi. Um, Hi, while biking or running for longer than an hour, my front part of my left foot goes fully numb. When I ride a bike for more than four hours, my right foot has mild numbness. I haven't done runs more than one out of 30, so I don't know how about the mild numbness in my right foot. Uh, in the beginning, I thought this from my bike position, but when I started running, I crossed that. So my shoes are new for both sports. My guess is nutrition or innate defect. It's probably an innate defect. No, I'm only kidding. Uh, I'm sure it's not. Um, and also, I'd be pretty surprised if it's nutrition. I'm not really sure how that one would work. Carbohydrates aren't getting to your feet. Uh, no, I'm not really sure um, how that works. Um, but I wouldn't discount bike position. Um, just because you get a similar sensation on the run doesn't mean it's necessarily linked. It's probably actually just coincidence. So you've got some something maybe in your uh, kind of the the foot um, layout in terms of your, how wide your foot is and so on. So most likely explanation is actually that your feet are being squeezed. Now this is something I've actually struggled with before in a certain brand's bike shoes and would also get a very similar kind of uh, numbness in the foot and a burning sensation as well on the sole of the foot can be really, really uncomfortable. So make sure that you try out just 
maybe it's just loosening the buckles off to see if that does anything, or if not, maybe you need to try a slightly wider fit shoe. Before you go buying any, perhaps if your mate's got some similar size that you can just try on and try out to that before you start making that call. Uh, yeah, and if that doesn't work, you can also try a more supportive insole. Uh, you can get some that actually start to support the arch or the metatarsals. Um, so if your arch or metatarsals are collapsing, that can also do that. Another thing to do if you just want to free up some room in the shoe is actually removing the insole. Again, that might just be a nice trial initially before you start doing anything drastic like buying new shoes or cutting your shoes up. Uh, anyway, I hope that has helped. If you've got any more questions that I've said already, please drop them in the comments section down below. Um, if anyone else out there has experienced some of these issues that people have mentioned today, then please get involved. Let us know if you've found any hacks or solutions to them. As always, keep the questions coming in using the hashtag GTN Coaches Corner, and see you next time.